Tonight, the season's drawing to a close and Christine can't wait. I've been working it out since February. I've had at least two guests arrested every month. Has Steve the Rep gone too far? What's up, babe? You want to get arrested, sacked and thrown out of home in one go? What? Car, Steve, they know it's you. And can Katie and Mikey keep it together? It's a love-hate relationship. He loves me, I hate him. Well, she just loves to hate me. It's the final week of the summer season, but out on the Iron Napa bar crawl, reps Steve and Alison are still going strong. Alison is watching older Steve. Aged just 18, his first season has had its ups and downs. He's had 80 new girlfriends, most of them guests, but he's also on a final warning. When the guests book a package holiday, you are not part of that package. On the quieter side of the island, Katie is repping the last excursion of her first season. The only cloud on her horizon is the on-off relationship with singer boyfriend Mikey. Hi ladies. Are you all together, are you? Yeah. Mikey's come along to check out the competition. He's not impressed. So I think he thinks he's better than him. We'll see. He is in some respects though, I, I, I admit he is. No, it's not a singing act really, it's a karaoke act. So I suppose if I get enough songs, I get the right songs, uh, I'll do what I want to do, but I wouldn't copy off anyone else. I'd rather be on the stage just singing, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Steve's not letting the warning spoil his working relationship with the guests. <laughs> Katie's having a better night than Mikey. But when the chance comes to perform, he comes into his own. Next morning, troubleshooter Christine's just got out of jail. Again. I've been working it out since February. I've had at least two guests arrested every month. I think people, when they come on holiday, tend to leave some of the inhibitions back at home. And think, well, it'll never happen to me. And in that case, then, when you're arrested, you're generally remanded four to five days, and then you're in court, and then it's generally time for you to go home. After another heavy night, Steve's determined to stay out of trouble and get his guests to the airport on time. How are we doing? Okay. You ready to go home? We are. Yeah. It's a bit warm. Tell me about it. Miss Walker. I've never actually missed a transfer yet. I've uh, been late for work a couple of times, like sleeping in. I'm supposed to start work on the Monday at 9 o'clock. It's been a day late. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm on best behaviour now. So. Back at the office, Christine's concerned about her guest's behaviour. Mr Hartley. What's that, the coffee table? Yes, which is in the opposite side of the room. And the chair's upside down? Yes. You'll see the uh, legs of the table somewhere else very shortly. There's, there's, there's blood door. everywhere. Yeah. Oh, I was at the bar um, during the day and uh, I had a couple of drinks and then uh, we went back to the apartment. Um, and I was messing around in the apartment and then a few lads from across the way started sort of shouting and 
saying things and that to uh, my girlfriend. Um, and then we ended up having a row. Um, and then I, I was just sort of running around the, the flat uh, shouting and that, and I slipped over and my leg went straight through the window. What's he saying, he slipped through the window? No, he said as he's gone the... in, he's gone in, slipped and gone through the window and, the, and at the same time as he slipped to go into the window, he's brought the coffee table and the chair. I can't believe how much blood there is. If it had been my archery, you can't actually... Apparently, you can't actually stop the archery bleeding, so they would have actually had to cut my leg off, which is what I was worried about. All I kept saying when I was in there was, don't cut my leg off, don't cut my leg off. James Hartley is one of Steve's guests. But Steve has other things on his mind. He's checking out the next batch of arrivals. Oh. Possibly ours, Females. Possibly ours? No, nah, no chance. <laughs> can I have your booking name, please? Yeah, like PC7. Yeah. All right, there. Can I have your booking name, please? PC7. Yeah? yeah? You're staying at the Christabel? Yeah. I don't have types. <laughs> <laughs> now we spotted some old friends. Mm. Yeah, How are you really? doing? Hey? I thought you'd be dead. Oh, Where are you going? Oh, is oh. that a train? Tell him we're not here yet. Oh, it's not me. Where are you staying? Hello? I'm Augusta. Hello, Han. How are you? I'm not bad. I haven't talked to you for a while. I know. We're missing you. Oh, yeah. You've been good. I, I, I can't I ring up and annoy you. <laughs> <laughs> did you go with Alison today to see Mr Hoyley? No, I did. Why is he still insisting he's not going to pay for the damage? Because it was an accident and he slipped. What you mean is ricocheted off every wall in the apartment as he slipped? Yep. He actually did admit that he had a fight with his girlfriend, but he said that's got nothing to do with that, how he slipped through the actual window. Right. To start off with. And then it was... He said, well, you don't have to pay, otherwise the police couldn't get involved. Your medical insurance isn't going to be covered. Yeah. It cost you about three grand. And he says, well, as soon as I get out of here, I'll just go and speak to the manager. Mike will have him arrested. But yeah. I've dug my heels in because I've thought... Hang on, I'm here on my own. These are trying to pull a fast one, um, which is why I've been I've been trying to get things sorted, but it just uh, nothing has just been been happening so far. Katie and Mikey are speaking again. They're planning to stay together in England when the season ends, but superstitious Katie is consulting a clairvoyant to see if she's doing the right thing. Around you, there's quite a lot of anger and aggression. There's petty arguments, petty things going on along, around you that are not very pleasant. A lot of jealousies is around you as well. You're also in a relationship now. This relationship, although it has been good, is on its way out. It's nearing its ending time. It's not your soulmate that so you're where with. am I going to find my soulmate? Can you tell You'll me? find your soulmate later on if you're lucky. At the hospital, Christine's got bad tidings for James Hartley too. He should be being discharged today. Mm -hmm. All right. The problem we have here is, because of what happened last week, Mike has statements saying uh, that there was a lot of shouting going on in the apartment and things being smashed. Mm -hmm. Mike from the Christabel is now calling in the police and he's going to press charges for criminal damage. He's also evicted the both of you from the property for mm -hmm. this damage. Now, because you have been evicted, from your accommodation, and because of the damage that you have caused, you are no longer our responsibility. You broke your booking conditions, and you're now homeless. Hello. Hello, Mike, how are you? You all right? Fine, how's nice you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, she was right when she said about petty arguments, wasn't she? Because you've had a few of them recently, and jealousy, and I don't know, to see what happens. There's a lot of noise around you now in your work. This is a noise like sounds like clubs, discos, music, but not nice music. It's music from other people, maybe. They're not controlled sounds, they're uncontrolled. I mean, you don't know what the people are going to do. Probably it's something like karaoke. Mm -hmm. Your work is going to change later. This is only, it's not for a long time. I would say another few, couple of years or so of this work and it'll change. And good luck. Thank Bye. you. Take care. Bye. Whew. Bloody hell. <laughs> she was right in what she said about music and everything. So she said, this job isn't going to last very long. We'll see what happens. Uh, if I move on to better things and now uh, get rid of her, and then that'll be it. <laughs> OK, evening, everyone. Yay! A little bit better. OK, 
My name is Steve. Today, myself and Spiros, our driver, we will be taking you to the resort of Ayanapa. Welcome to Cyprus on behalf of Pricewright Holidays. Is everybody here for a great holiday? Yeah! That'll do. Steve's transfer is going well, but his guest James isn't happy. Back at the hospital, Christine presents her ultimatum. You will have to pay the £150 before you leave this island. Because if you refuse to pay it, you're going to go straight from here, straight to Iron Upper Nick. I asked the rep for receipts, but then they didn't come back with any receipts. All they said was he wanted the money. And I said, well, want to get out of here, I'll go and no, see No, he's supposed it. to give you an itemised bill, I told him to. Well, no, I, I, we had one. none of that. We asked for it, I asked for yeah. it. Yeah, and they haven't given it yet. No. I went in there with a story that I'd given to be met with a completely different one. And I've got to try and find the neutral ground and all that and find out who is telling the truth and who's telling poor pies. Sometimes it's not that easy. Hi, Alison. How are you doing? Not too bad. What have we got now? We've got a problem. Mr Hartley. He's going to cause any problems. He's it, it, calmed it, down. It's it's dangerous to himself and to his yeah. uh, girlfriend. He's now agreed to pay for the damages. So I'll come up here to get the invoice from Mike to take down for him to pay. Right, I've got a copy of the invoice and you'll receive the original when the amount is paid. It's totaling £162 because it's including VAT. Right. I've told James um, that if he causes any more problems, if he does anything, he's out. Mike has agreed to let him come back to the apartments on the condition that he behaves himself. Yeah, I'll be a good boy. I'm yeah. always a good boy. <laughs> You are now. <laughs> Good boy Steve is getting ready for another night out. But even with three written warnings, there'll be no holding back. It's free wine all night long. When they've had something to eat, take them down on the beach. Yeah, play a few games, get everyone split up into teams. Get them extremely, extremely drunk. Have a really good time. Conquests. Ooh, ask me in about 20 minutes by the time we get down there. It's business as usual for Steve the Rep. On the young and lively beach party, the guests are warming up nicely. My team are up for it tonight. All my guests stay at the Crystal Bell, so uh, it's a pretty mad day. Across town, Mikey is worrying about his career, as the summer karaoke season in Cyprus draws to an end. I don't want to be stuck doing this for the rest of my life. I want to set my sights high for that. I want to, I want to, I want to travel as well. I don't want to get stuck in it now. My dad's been doing it for the last 30 years now, and he's, he's basically dead end after that. Make it up first. Thank you. Round of applause for some of your players. You're inside the ghetto. Let me see you clapping your hands. You all know this one. Come on. While Mikey's in the limelight again, Katie's just another face in the crowd. She's worried too, but about the relationship. I do feel a bit of a groupie because I'm in there every sudden night. I feel like I'm one of these um, couples and say one of them just singing or whatever and the girlfriend just sat there watching them all night. That's what I feel like I am. So he works five nights a week. He's had a, like, a brilliant life. He's been here five years in a row now and from what he's saying to me, I think he'll probably go home, get back into his job and get a house. She won't save me. All together, come on. Marvellous. It's a love-hate relationship. He loves me, I hate him. Well, she just loves to hate me. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Back on the beach, Steve's five, not got a care in the world. Six, that way, that way, that way, that way. But although he doesn't know it, this party could be his last as a price right rep. Steve's hung over again. But is this morning's headache all down to alcohol? I think it's early. About three. Stayed up to about six. Woke up at nine. And get back to sleep again. So I feel pretty great. <laughs> 
But it wasn't just Steve that got wrecked last night. At head office in Larnaca, Karen has got some bad news for manager Gail. You're going to love this one. What now? Steve Ball. Last night, after bar crawl, I presume after bar crawl, has gone back to the Christabel, has taken a car from reception, a car that was left by guests at half past nine. A hire car? A hire car, a Petsa's car, a Jeep, I believe. He has taken that car and he has disappeared with a girl um, and basically has damaged the car. Oh. What's up, babe? You want to get arrested, sacked and thrown out of home in one go? Why? Car, Steve, they know it's you. Um, they want to speak to you now, they're getting CID onto it. As well as paying for the damage, Steve, what were you doing? <sighs> and don't tell me it wasn't you, they already know it was. Yeah, I know. Come on. Go in now. Yes. Well, I'll call Nick is here and try right. and find out how much this is going to cost, but he's, he's, he's only really... going to be one week commission, Karen, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, um... That's going to be... The, the, the problem is going to be getting the money. He spent half of his season paying back mm, I know, yeah. this, that and the other. Uh, it's just not... Well, we could always yeah. speak to his father. But his father's probably just about had enough anyway, <laughs> isn't he? While Steve's future hangs in the balance, Katie's spending a last afternoon at the beach with fellow rep Claire. Katie's decided to have a cooling off period in her relationship with Mikey. Oh, it's quite nice. I'm going to New York to work in New York repping again. And he's going home. Back to sunny Middlesbrough to be an electrician. <laughs> Mikey isn't happy with the news. The only reason she's going to go out to New York at first was because of her mother. And she didn't want to go. But, uh, she said she's, all she's done all her life is do what other people tell her to do. So I, I'm not going to tell her to do anything. I'm going to let her do what she wants. And if, if it means going away, that's it. I kind of regret not being single out here for the summer. No offence to Mikey or anything, but I would have perhaps liked to have seen it as being a single person out in Cyprus, which is what I should have really done. <laughs> I like to stay with Katie. She's a lovely last woman. Come quite close over the last few months. And she knows, you know, she, she wants me. She wants it, basically. She wants a relationship. It's there if she wants it. I mean, I hope, yeah, I hope we keep in touch, but you can't tell. It's difficult when it's long distance. Steve's wondering about his prospects, while Gail and Karen are counting the cost. Minimum. It's a lot more serious than they originally thought. He says, but if he doesn't come up with the money, he's going to call the police today and say it was stolen, he knows who stole it. Look at the state of her trying to get this bag out. Oh, OK, come on. It's all right, I'll do everything. Bickering till the end, Katie and Mikey are off to the airport. They're flying out together, <laughs> but are they going their separate ways? <laughs> In Larnaca, it's time for Steve to face the music. Right, I think you know why you're here. Do you want to explain your side of the story? Can't remember. Did you or did you not take a car from outside Christabel last night? Yep. OK. Where did you take the car? The beach. Who did you have in the car? By myself. You were by yourself in the car? Yeah. Because the story that I've got is that you were the female in reception of the Christabel when you collected the car. Mm-hmm. Who was the female that you were with? Just one of our guests. So you took the car by yourself to the beach? Yep. And what happened with the car? I just lost control of it and went in a ditch. It's the last airport run of Katie's season. Final sights in Cyprus? Ooh. Can't wait, get out of it. You don't mean that, really. Claire's also on her way to the airport. She has her own thoughts about Katie and Mikey's future. I'll get a phone call from Katie in about four months' time. Tell us she's pregnant with her first one. She'll be up in the council estate in Middlesbrough. 
he'll be out on the social social circuit doing this clubs in Middlesbrough and, shy, yeah, 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 and all the Tom Jones. Do you know how much damage you've done to that car? Yeah. Don't we to tell you exactly? Because you were involved in a collision, the airbags inflated, or the lights came on, the airbags now need replacing. You've damaged the right-hand wing, it's scratched all over and needs to be resprayed. The bonnet's been damaged, the mirrors are broken, underneath there's a 10-inch hit, and the front windscreen has totally got to be replaced. The approximate cost of that, have you got any idea? It's £2,000. After 20 long weeks together, Katie and Claire say their final tearful farewell. <laughs> oh, my God, bless you, Dad. Oh, bless her. Stop you laughing. I have no alternative but to terminate your contract of employment. What I want you to do is gather together all your company property, that's all your uniform, your ticket books and absolutely everything. And from then on, you'll need to be out of the company accommodation by tomorrow evening. Is there anything you want to add? I'm sorry, just let you down. Oh, yeah. Been so silly. It's been a very expensive lesson. If you want a few minutes on your own, I can leave you in there. Yeah? It's never easy. It's never easy to sack anybody. And regardless of what they've done, but that is just so stupid. So stupid. You know. And I, just, I think it's harder again because, you know, I, I like Steve as a person. He's such a lovely guy. <laughs> Katie did go to New York, but she only stayed for eight weeks. She came home and got back together with Mikey. Claire dealt with 5,000 guests this summer. She's now been promoted and is training Price Right's new reps. Christine no longer deals with guest complaints. She's also been promoted and is now in charge of quality control. Steve's still paying off his debts and working in a hotel in Surrey. He hopes to be back in Cyprus next summer. Thank you.